Bill Johnson here with what I will call Lake Orion History 101. And I'm joined by Jimmy Johnson, the creator of Where Living is a Vacation, uh, social media presence. I really enjoy following it on social media, all the great photos and everything you dig up. Uh, Jimmy, tell me a little bit about uh, where uh, Living is a Vacation came from. Um, so yeah, we're living's vacation uh, as a passion project. It uh, started just only a few years ago when um, seeing so much negativity in the news and like, ah, oh, there's got to be some fun stuff we can share, like nostalgia, fun. On who? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I went ahead and uh, just started posting something on Facebook about just a little snippet of history. And uh, from there, it just kept going on and on and on. and. People started liking it more and more, and like, oh, there's more history. So it's like one of those things you chase down a rabbit hole. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so then the Facebook led to a website and videos and store and all this fun stuff. So it's great to follow your passion. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I came out to this community um, not quite 30 years ago, but we're getting there. And it, it's been fun learning about the history of Lake Orion. Like, I didn't realize when I first came out here the, the history of Park Island on the lake. And uh, I'm always learning something new about the history of Lake Orion. And it's just fascinating. And for, I'm sure most of you know watching that uh, Lake Orion was a resort town. Uh, there are cottages out here and people would board the train from Detroit and Pontiac and come out to Lake Orion to, you know, spend a, a weekend or spend the summers out here. Uh, um, Jimmy Hoffa had his uh, summer home out here. He would come out here to Lake Orion. Um, so it has a long history of a resort town and, and such an amazing history. Um, today, I think we're going to start off focusing a little bit about uh, uh, Lake Orion schools, an amazing history of schools in Lake Orion. So, uh, Jimmy, get us started with what you have. Yeah, yeah. So first, we have the, the first schoolhouse, uh, 1844. I have a picture here. It actually was located, the house is still there, at Church and Anderson Street. Yeah, it's, uh, I drive past it all the time. It's a residence now, and uh, it's amazing that that's still standing. Yeah, there it is. So yeah, there's a picture of the, the first schoolhouse, 1844. So yeah, located at Church and Anderson. Um, so like I said, many schoolhouses that were scattered throughout the city. So it was great to, um, um, it's great for some children to go to these smaller schoolhouses and easier to travel back and forth. So, like, like Hogwarts School. We got to get in there sometime. I th um, uh, one of these days we'll have to reach out to the homeowner there and see if they can give us a tour. Yeah. Uh, what a what a historic uh, gem. Yeah. Um, so this brings us to like the uh, the next school. So 1893. Notice this building is not around in the area right now. Um, so that's okay. considered Lake Orion's first high school, right? Yep, first high school, built in 1893. It's a four-story school. And uh, again, at the corner, Elizabeth and Lapeer. Um, and it served grades one through 12, so big spans. Um, it was high up above on the hill, so it had a good view of the city skyline. Uh, it had a large bell tower at the top. Um, but back in the, uh, the 30s, the, with the Works Progress Administration with FDR, uh, putting people back to work, they knocked it down, and uh, due to they're expanding as more students, so they moved on. Now, did that stand where the the Elizabeth Street School is currently standing, or was that in a different part of town? I believe it was in that same general area. Might have been even next door because kind of like the the times crossed over. Mm, okay, what a beautiful school! Just a gothic-looking school. Um, it's just amazing. It's a shame that it's not still there today, but uh, what an awesome uh, piece of history. It's the only picture that I could actually find online of it. <laughs> yeah, that, I've only seen one photo of that school. There's got to be more out there, but that's the only one I've ever seen. Yeah. So, so afterwards, uh, we move on to 1927, the, the school that we know now, uh, the Elizabeth Street School, uh, served as the, the high school for quite some time for K through 12. Uh, the one pictured here, yeah, you just recently posted this picture on social media and it just blew me away. Uh, it looks like a movie set or something with the, the vintage cars parked in that lot. And it's amazing looking at that photo, how little things have changed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You still see the, the fa facade, the architecture still there. Uh, the, the entrance, how the rounded entrance is still there. 
So yeah, this, this was an awesome find. Um, this one's actually a photo from uh, 1930. And um, okay. next door to it too, there was like a smaller uh, schoolhouse mm -hmm. as well. Um, so through the years, you know, it was in operation through the 90s. I had the Boys and Girls Club. Yeah. Um, now speaking yeah. of that, um, you know, the school is still standing today. It's known as the Eamon Center today, named after Fred Eamon. And in 2014, there was a, a group of entrepreneurs who purchased the building and had some plans for it. They were going to be residential units, uh, maybe a restaurant in the gymnasium. Unfortunately, that didn't quite uh, pan out. But we do have video uh, when uh, they purchased it, and we actually walked through the building. So I'm going to start the video here. Um, and uh, it was, my, I don't know if it was my, no, it wasn't my first time in the school because I had gone inside the school when it was the Boys and Girls Club and that sort of stuff. But yeah. here's a look at the interior of the school. Uh, there's the gymnasium. Um, and uh, here's some footage uh, from 1995 where they held a senior citizen prom in the gymnasium. And, um, <laughs> and that's when it was still operational where the Boys and Girls Club was, was being used uh, yeah. there. And the kids would play basketball and board games. And high school yeah. students uh, came together with senior citizens and had a little prom there in the gymnasium, which is so cool yeah. to see now. Uh, there's the group that purchased it. Um, it's cool to see the old Orion High School uh, still appear above the door. Yeah, look at the old chalkboards uh, the old and cabinets storage and chalkboards. And uh, and there's that oh, logo. There's, that, there's logo. that logo. Now you have a picture of that logo, yeah. and um, since I shot my video, they have since removed uh, that logo from the floor. Why don't you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So here's a here's a close-up picture um, of that uh, dragon mascot, and uh, it was actually originally drawn uh, in 1945 wow. uh, by Patricia Olson, who went who attended the school. Um, and then later on, it was painted uh, in 1947 by Reuben Barclay and John Doerr, and they were the class of 1950. But like Joe was saying, I was so glad they were able to cut it out, move it. They had a parade with it, I believe. Yeah, so now it gets transported like on some sort of a trailer that has it encased in plexiglass or something. And so that'll be preserved for future generations. Because yeah. you can imagine if they were to leave it there on the floor, people would be walking on it and it would be oh, yeah. lost to time. Yeah. Uh, they so incorporated it's cool. this actually into uh, the, the high school's gym. You'll see it on the wall on the concourse. As you run around, they have it behind the glass. It looks great. So now the village has some major plans for that building. Uh, they're going to do some construction and, and some things around the building, and they're going to incorporate this historic building uh, into those plans. So that's really exciting. I'm, I'm curious to see uh, how they're going to move forward with that. Uh, what do you got next? Uh, the next school I want to cover, which was interesting to me, is the Proper School. So uh, built in 1927, it's located uh, on Baldwin Road uh, near one of the roundabouts. Um, Right now, it's, a, it's still a center. The building's still there. And um, it's in Gingerville, uh, built in 1927. And little, little factoid, I didn't know that it was actually first called the, uh, the Coolidge, uh, the, Calvin, uh, the Coolidge School, mm -hmm. after President Calvin Coolidge. And uh, the story was, here's like a, in the picture, you'll see like what's behind uh, that copper sign there. But uh, yeah, I guess in the area, Calvin Coolidge at the time did something that irritated the Democratic Party and the Democratic <laughs> um, people in Orion. So they covered that up, called it the Proper School after John and Charlotte Proper, which um, they were one of the first to homestead land on Baldwin. So yeah, that bronze sign is, is still there now, I believe. And I, I don't know if they'll ever peel that sign back to see what's behind it, but I'm very excited about that if they ever So do. you said that's <laughs> over in the Gingerville area? Yep. That's yeah, awesome. Right on Baldwin, yeah. Check it out. Yeah. Um, you know, since uh, I've come to this community, I've witnessed history when it comes to the schools. Uh, we covered the groundbreaking ceremony for both uh, Orion Oaks, which is located right next to us, uh, and the high school. I remember what a big deal it was when uh, they had a, a millage um, to build the new high school and swimming pool. And so I was there for the groundbreaking and, and the grand opening and all that stuff. So, um, so not only is there an amazing history here in Lake Orion, but we've witnessed history 
over the last uh, couple of decades here in Lake Orion, and uh, I'm sure there'll be more to come. Taking a tour of the new school revealed that most of the classrooms were full and teachers were busy getting their lesson plans up and going. More than 1,800 people are using the new building, including, for the first time, ninth graders. For staff and faculty, I think it's been a, a transformation from what we were used to to what the facility, you know, now that we are able to occupy. Um, there's just really no comparison between the two. So I guess it's sort of been like a, an awakening and a transformation. Um, and with that comes getting used to things and a lot, you know, some stress, um, some insecurity and instability. Um, but in spite of all that, faculty and staff, by 8 o'clock Monday morning, were in classrooms teaching kids and, um, and students were learning. You know, they talk about being confused and being frustrated and having to find their way. Um, and we know that's going to happen and we have many volunteers on site to help people find their places. But by day two, I was amazed at the large number of students who went where they knew they needed to go. It was fantastic. If you look at the exterior of the building, you'll see that construction was continuing even after the first day of school. Yet to be completed is the school gymnasium, the auditorium, and the swimming pool. Until construction is complete, auto tech and engineering classes, band and choral, and physical education classes will be held at the former high school. Um, now, just recently on uh, February 1st, uh, Orient Township uh, had a big uh, open house and ribbon cutting ceremony um, where they uh, opened their new uh, um, uh, municipal complex. And I was there with the camera and, um, uh, you know, like I said, we, we capture history here at ONTV uh, in addition to talking about the past, but there's history going on all the time. And so the municipal complex just uh, opened up beautiful new facility located on uh, Scripps right off of uh, Joslin, uh, Joslin and Scripps. Um, and they're going to be uh, demolishing the former location, former Township Hall, that's going to be kind mm -hmm. of reappropriated into Municipal Park there. Um, but this is a historic moment, uh, a brand new municipal complex, uh, new boardrooms. They had their first meeting a uh, couple of weeks prior to the grand opening. Um, but it's just an amazing facility, amazing technology, uh, wide open, bright, uh, brightly lit. Um, so I thought we would uh, use this as an opportunity to talk a little bit about the history of Town Hall and Village Hall uh, here in Lake Orion. Um, so prior to uh, Orion Township and all that stuff, we can go all the way back. I see you have a photo standing by. There's yeah. a, there's a uh, brick uh, in the old Town Hall in downtown Lake Orion where 313 Pizza now stands. Um, that says 1900 on it, 1900, correct? 1900, yeah. So there are some buildings that date earlier than that in downtown uh, Lake Orion. There's mm -hmm. uh, where, where a bean to go is right now. That used to have a sign out of this at 1881 on it. Yeah. Um, so that, that was a bank, and that goes way back. Um, tell us about yeah. this uh, photo that you have here in front of you. So, yeah, with the, this photo here is the Township Hall 1939. So here's a snapshot in time here. You see the firefighters and uh, has a list of all the firefighters names. The last names, uh, many have, um, have family that are still in Lake Orion, which is great. So yeah, this building now has the same facade, same, it still says Town Hall 1900, and uh, now home 313 Pizza next door, uh, the heritage spinning and weaving. But uh, I just absolutely love this photo. I think they have it in their restaurant too, so it's it's a very, very nice snapshot in time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The village offices were there for a long time before they moved over to the church on Church Street. Um, but it's it's really great that um, initially, and I have some video here if we want to go to it. Initially, when the village offices moved over uh, to the church, uh, it was Lockhart's Barbecue that moved in to that building. Let's take a look at this video here. Um, mm -hmm. There's uh, Drew cutting the ribbon on Lockhart's barbecue. <clears throat> and uh, it was really surprising to me that the village offices had moved out of that building because that had been village offices for such a long time. And you'll see some video coming up here in a moment uh, that shows. Look, now here's, yep, here's that same building Hall. with a <laughs> horse-drawn fire uh, truck. 
There's some of the village offices uh, I shot back in 2014. Uh, the, the police department was located in that building as well. As a matter of fact, former chief uh, Jerry Nars, he says that his office is now the men's room yeah. at 313. <laughs> um, there's the rear entrance of, of the building, which is now yeah. Lockhart's Barbecue. And, and like I said, it's really awesome that they've embraced their history. You'll see um, historic photos and archival photos uh, hanging on their walls. Um, there, look at this. This is amazing. This goes way back. Yeah. Um, this is similar to the one that you had. Um, yeah. Wow, that's so interesting. I haven't see seen it that. One. Evolve yeah. over time. Look at that. Hiller's department store to huh. the, to the right there. Um, so some really amazing history. Uh, we recreated this photo that you see here with the fire department. We went out there and oh, parked yeah. the fire trucks right mm -hmm. in front of the building and tried to recreate that historic photo. And the township had uh, pulled out a drone and got some aerial shots and stuff. So yeah, that's an amazing photo. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's, it's such a historic building and it's had an amazing life as town hall. And yeah. Now you have a uh, photo of another town hall. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, this was another town hall uh, pictured here in 1956. So this is at 571 South Lapeer Road. So before this it used to be a nightclub, a dance hall uh, in the mid 30s and eventually a sheriff's station. It was a senior center. So it got repurposed over and over and, uh, until Jacobson's bought it uh, in 1996. But uh, yeah, I think for on from here, I believe, Joe, the next one was 1974, which is the one they just moved out of. Uh, yeah, Jocelyn, yeah, we'll talk about that one yeah. in a second. I actually have a video of the former township hall. You can see the signage on the building says uh, Orient Township Community Center. Um, when the Sheriff's Department uh, opened up their Orient Township substation, it was actually at this facility, this building. Uh, it looks like something out of the Old West. I mean, yes. it has <laughs> such a long history. Um, and, uh, and so the, town sh or the Sheriff's Department substation operated out of that. Um, and eventually they moved out of this building into the former township hall. There's Brad Jacobson who ended up uh, purchasing that building. And initially Brad um, used that building for storage uh, but eventually they just ended up taking a wrecking ball to it and uh, totally demolished it. Um, and so there's uh, some of the offices there of uh, the previous township hall where, like I said, they're going to be taking yeah. a wrecking ball to the previous township hall. Uh, yeah. Early on in the 90s, that, that council chamber had some really garish colors, mm -hmm. oranges and yellows and things like that. It had a, a leftover from the 70s, I guess. It had that sort of a vibe. Yeah. Uh, there's Doug Brown, former township supervisor. Um, here's some more outside shots of that old uh, sheriff's department substation with the, uh, oh, the yeah. cars out back and uh, an amazing history there. Again, it's kind of a shame to, to see him take the wrecking ball of this building, even yeah. though it just felt out of place there on Lapeer Road. It, yeah. uh, uh, I'm glad the one on Joslin, though, is going to, once they take a wrecking ball to that one, yeah. it'll be returned back to green space. So, I mean, that's a, a, a great park already, but to add that green space back in is going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, what else you got? Yeah, so, just to go back to what you were talking about, uh, the um, Bean to Go, uh, it just sparked a memory of it being the Orient State Bank. And um, after the Orient State Bank, uh, there was a restaurant that they opened in there and uh, they ended up calling it the vault restaurant I believe it's the vault restaurant and um, there's an actual bank vault obviously because it was a bank and they tried to incorporate uh, they wanted to remove it out of the restaurant but they couldn't so they ended up making it a little uh, a dining room in there and they put a table in there and you can eat in the vault <laughs> that's awesome yeah so is it still there in a bean to go or did they I don't know. I don't I'm know if they curious. ever dismantled it. I mean, when you yeah. walk in, you, you can't really see where that vault would be. But uh, but even their menu was like a, a bank statement. It had all the, the wines listed. And yeah. so they really uh, just tapped in, leaned into the, uh, the bank feel. <laughs> yeah, I know that uh, when it was a bank, uh, someone told me a story that uh, there was a bank robbery that uh, they went in, they robbed the bank. 
and took off and the people that were in the village at the time all gave chase and chased oh, down the wow. bank robbers and stuff. So <laughs> Lake Orion had its Bonnie and Clyde style bank robbery back in the day. Yeah, definitely. I didn't yeah. know about that. Now, um, uh, one more thing about uh, Town Chapal Village yeah. Hall. So uh, Village Hall offices were in that town hall building on Flint Street in downtown Lake Orion. And then uh, a number of years ago, they moved over into the church on Church Street. Hmm. I have some video here of uh, the, the opening ceremony, the grand opening of um, the village offices moving over <coughs> to that building. And really, if, if it wasn't for the village offices moving into that church, I think that's what sort of saved this building because it was dilapidated. Um, they wouldn't allow you to enter the church because you might have fallen through the floor. So the oh, act wow. of village offices moving into this church helped preserve this building and they went in and they shored it up and turned it into uh, the council chambers and village offices. Uh, mm -hmm. the, um, the police department uh, occupies that space with them as well, the, the yeah. village police department. Um, and so you can see the interiors of that church now, um, they really salvaged that building and it's yeah. uh, really amazing what they've done there. The front porch looks familiar too, isn't it? When they had a movie filmed, I remember. Yes, they did. Uh, the uh, Nain Rouge, yeah. uh, what was it? Uh, Dawn of something. Yeah. Um, but they did film uh, a film, uh, a movie there, Jerry Narsh, our police. The star, I heard, police yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it tells the story of the Nain Rouge, which is a long time Detroit tradition of a, a little, uh, pixie or something that used to cause trouble. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so they filmed a, a scene there and uh, there's Darwin McCleary, our former village supervisor. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so it was interesting to see how they were able to save this uh, building and, and uh, move the township offices into it, so. Yeah, that's All interesting. Right. What else you got? So yeah, um, we're gonna go back into time, farther back into time. <laughs> so uh, early 1900s, so Park Island, the amusements. Um, you've heard of the Thriller roller coaster that was on Park Island. And this Thriller roller coaster here, as you notice, you see like the big name on, which I, I don't know if that was ever saved, Lake Orion Coaster Thriller. Uh, yeah. That would be great if that was saved. But um, yeah, on Park Island, they had, you know, obviously swimming, power boat tours, penny arcade, uh, dancing, roller skating, had all sorts of fun. Um, stuff to do on the island and many vacationers, this was considered up north back, back when. Yeah. So this was vacation land. So coming up here was, you see they're all dressed to the nine, go on this roller coaster. Um, you know, in the, in the 30s, um, well actually mid 1900s, they dismantled uh, the thriller and they actually used and repurposed the wood to create a, like a toboggan run with it as well. So. It's good to see that, you know, after its age, it uh, was reused. Yeah. Yeah, apparently uh, there were several fires uh, on Park Island. The dance hall had caught on fire. And, um, and after several fires, they just decided to sell the property and they built subdivisions there. But uh, yeah, amazing uh -huh. history. And I've talked to uh, senior citizens who uh, used to go there, used to go to Park Island and uh, oh, on a okay. date and play the games mm -hmm. and ride the rides and the carousel and all that stuff. So yeah. I don't know if there's many people around today that uh, actually step foot on there uh, when it was Park Island, but I've heard the stories and there's one couple that I that I knew, they had souvenirs that said, you know, uh, Park Island, uh, you know, little things they would win for, you know, yeah. knocking down yep. the pins or whatever. So yep. pretty, pretty incredible, yeah. So there's another like the, the boating too. Um, so here pictured is the, the city of Orion boat, which before it was named that, it was called the Chautauqua uh, boat. And uh, originally the Chautauqua boat could carry 300 passengers, had an orchestra and a dance floor on board. So picture that, picture this two story with an orchestra <laughs> dancing happening. And there's probably lots of movement happening on this boat. Um, the boat eventually capsized with the high winds, and then they end up rebuilding this boat uh, to what oh. you see here, which is the, the city of Orion. Um, so after the demand died down and less uh, vacationers came up here, um, the boat was actually broken into pieces along with all the other passenger boats. 
uh, and a lot of that wood was um, put into the lake on the shore on Oak Lane, hmm. so back in the 30s. So I'm, I just wonder if any remnants of, if you get any wood panels that come up in the water, <laughs> maybe that's why. <laughs> I had heard rumors, and again, these are just rumors, that um, they used to say that one of the boats may have been sunk just because they, they couldn't salvage it, so they sunk. Uh, mm. sunk it in the lake and I've always been curious those of uh, you who dive uh, on local lakes I would love to send a diver down uh, in Lake Orion to see what's under the water um, there's there's talk of yeah. um, they used to have a contest every winter where they would park a, a jalopy on the ice and people would would it was like a <laughs> raffle and you would pick a date in the spring where that car would drop through the ice and whoever picked the correct date would win a prize or whatever. And I wondered, when that car dropped through the ice, did they retrieve it, or are those cars sitting at the bottom of Lake Orion? Right, I wonder if we have a dealership of cars at the bottom of Lake Orion. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get to the bottom of this. We yeah. gotta send, uh, send a diver down into Lake Orion. I heard visibility isn't all that great uh, in Lake Orion, and it's pretty weedy, um, yeah. but gosh, wouldn't that be fun to send somebody down there and oh. see what's at the bottom yeah. of the lake? Now, for those of you who might not know, um, lake Orion wasn't one big lake at one time. It used to be several smaller lakes, but when they dammed Paint Creek, they flooded those, I think, five lakes into one large lake that we enjoy today. So imagine yep. the history Correct. that yep. could be sitting at the bottom of, oh, of yeah. Lake Orion. Even one of those heavy magnets, like one of those strong magnets, I'm sure you'll end up pulling up a car. Yeah. <laughs> I, have a, I just brought up another video here. I'll play a little bit of it. Uh, Reva Campbell, uh, whose family owned the marina in Lake Orion, um, they, uh, they, uh, Reva would offer a tour, uh, a tour of the lakes, and it was fascinating, or, or the homes on the lake. And uh, she had really cool, like, archival pieces. Like, if, if Lake Orion was to ever have their own mm -hmm. museum, Reva would be a great source of artifacts for that museum. Uh, I can't remember if I have video of it or not, but one of the artifacts that she brings along on her tour was a one-piece wool bathing suit that the women used to wear uh, at, uh, I think it was Bellevue Island. There used to be a hotel there. And uh, the yeah. women, when they would go swimming in Lake Orion, would wear these heavy, there it is right there. Yeah. Uh, it's a heavy wool one-piece bathing suit. That, that's one of the original bathing suits that was worn on uh, when the women yeah. would swim in Lake Orion. So, met so many um, artifacts and pieces that she's collected over the years. It's, it's amazing what yeah. she has, and especially like one of the prizes from one of the games from Park Island. Yeah. She has, it's like the red glass that says Lake Orion on the, on the side. It's now you see them going cool. under this bridge. That's the Bellevue Bridge and at one time and I have footage of that too um, is uh, it was a camelback bridge and it was a big hump and mm -hmm. when cars would go to Bellevue Island they would bottom out on this camelback bridge so eventually they had to demolish it and they yeah. gave it a longer sort of entrance and exit so the cars wouldn't bottom out um, but uh, yeah so I have video of that and, and uh, yeah that, that there's photos of that Bellevue Hotel that are just spectacular um, yeah it's like picturesque out of a you don't think it's from Lake Orion but this yeah. big grand hotel is was on the island <laughs> yeah pretty it's, amazing yeah <laughs> all right well Jimmy thanks for coming down and spending some time with us we got to keep this uh, going in the future thank so you for much having to me. talk about and uh, thank you for tuning in and uh, letting us share a little bit of Lake Orion's history.